Hi everyone, thanks again for hopping on today. I know you are all very, very busy, so we really appreciate it when you guys can join us on our webinar series. Um, I'm Meredith Marshall, and I'm the marketing coordinator here at Blue Tent, and I'm joined with Reagan Hain, and she's our social expert, and she'll be presenting our Why Instagram webinar today. Um, and we'll get started in a second. Um, and just so you know, it's a 30 minute webinar, so hopefully it's nice and short and sweet, and you guys can go back to your busy days once we're finished. Um, but a little background on Blue Tent. Uh, we are a digital agency out here in Colorado, and we focus on the travel industry. Um, and some of you I've noticed are uh, current clients, and there's some new names on the list, so great and welcome. Thanks for joining us. And um, just also another side note on our webinars, we, have the, we try to host them monthly, and uh, hopefully you've seen these in the past, but if you haven't, um, just always be on the lookout for the next upcoming one. We try to focus on everything in digital marketing. Uh, our next one is actually Thursday, December 8th, and it'll be about planning your digital marketing uh, for 2017. So be sure to look out for that invite um, and join us for that one. Um, it'll be really good and interesting. And also during this webinar, you'll notice there's a place you can ask questions. And those are all anonymous, so I'm the only one that'll actually see them, so no one else will see these, but I'll bring them up throughout the webinar. Otherwise, we can always touch base after Reagan and I will reach out to you and um, we can talk later on. Um, but I think that's about it. Uh, so I'm just gonna hand it over to Reagan to get started. Thank you. Yeah, so as um, as Meredith said, this is one of, uh, one of our webinars in the series. So of these, um, we posted about, I think, three or four social media webinars so far. Um, and we'll host another one after this in January as well. So this webinar is really gonna focus on Instagram and go more in depth about how to make the most of um, Instagram as a marketing platform. Uh, so first I wanted to talk about social media kind of as a whole. Um, you know, social media is a relatively new marketing platform and it's uh, it's really unique also because it's it's something that allows you to connect with your audience uh, in an authentic way and build kind of an emotional connection with them, which is something you can't do with most other marketing platforms. Um, you know, you can't do that with print ads or you can't do that with, oh, sorry. You can't do that with TV ads, radio ads, banner ads, any, any of those things. You're not really connecting with the user and you're not... Um, you're not getting to know them one-on-one, -on -one, which is something that you can do on social media. So I think it's a really powerful way to reach your guests, potential guests, and it's a, it's a great way to really put yourself out there. Um, social media used to be kind of optional. It was something that brands used, you know, as a, it was a perk, an extra, an extra tool in the marketing toolkit. Um, but that's not the case anymore. Social media is really a part of most people, almost everyone's life. It's, it's a place where people go to find information about the news. It's, it's influencing things from the presidential election to, you know, how you find out about your cousin's new baby. <laughs> so it's really permeating in all different aspects of, of your, your audience's life. So it's, um, it's really important that you're active there and you're keeping up with your competitors and you're, you're reaching your audience where they are, and they're on social media. So why should you care about Instagram? Um, Instagram is kind of a new platform. It's been around for you know five or six years, um, but it's really become popular in the past, in the past two or three. And now it's, it's just behind Facebook in the number of active users it has. It has about 500 million, I believe, and it's really, beneficial tool for travel brands because, you know, it's focused on photography. So um, you're in these beautiful destinations with access to the beach or the mountains right outside your door. That's amazing photography content that people are interested in and want to see. So, uh, you know, travel brands have a great opportunity to use that to their advantage to reach their audience and, um, you know, inspire them. Instagram is a place where people seek inspiration and, they go there to kind of idealize what, what their travel plans could be like. So it's, it's a really interesting space for, for travel brands to be. So as I said, Instagram has about 500 million active users. 32% of internet users are on Instagram. And one out of every five minutes on mobile is spent on Instagram. 
And then the average user on Instagram spends about 21 minutes per day. So that's a long time. They're, they're on it almost daily and they're spending a lot of time there looking for, looking for content. So there's a really interesting study that the Pew Research Center just published um, last this November, so it's really recent. And it, it shows all these great statistics about how social media is a part of Americans' lives. And that's where that statistic about 32% of Americans are, are using Instagram came from. And it shows you uh, here on the, on the right side that Instagram is the second most used social media platform just behind Facebook. So it's, it's growing a lot and it's no longer just kind of a fringe social media network. And this is another diagram that shows you how quickly it's growing. So you can see in the middle section there, um, the number of active users is growing a lot and the number of members is growing. So it's, it's only going to get bigger from here. So I want to talk about a few case studies so we can show you kind of what we're talking about when I talk about Instagram ads or um, strategic engagement in the, in the next few slides. So I'm going to show you a couple of what our clients are doing. So this is Rainbow Riders. They are a hot air balloon outfitter based in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and they also have locations in Phoenix and Colorado Springs. They... Um, we advertise on Facebook and Instagram and Pinterest for them, and for their... The Albuquerque Balloon Festival was in October, and that's a really um, it's a really huge event for Albuquerque. If you haven't heard about it, it draws hundreds of thousands of people to Albuquerque from across the country and across the world. It's it's a huge event. So we wanted to target those visitors and get them to, to get them to notice Rainbow Riders and get them interested and you know secure them as a lead. So we created a series of campaigns. Two of them were on Facebook, that's what these two are, and then we created Instagram ads to correspond with that so that we were reaching those users on multiple platforms. So um, the Facebook ads were, were geared towards collecting newsletter subscribers, uh, that's the ad on the left-hand side, and the right-hand side is an ad to collect new um, page followers, so people that like their page. And then the Instagram ads were uh, set up to drive website clicks and uh, just general brand awareness. So from those ads, they received 229 sessions on their website, 522 page likes, and 90, 90 new newsletter subscribers. And those were all um, new users who had never heard of them before. They weren't, they weren't um, people that were, had visited their website before. They were completely new. So that was a huge success for us, and they really grew their, um, their lead list from that campaign. Um, the next example is from Chase and Rainbows. This is a client in uh, Hawaii, and we do kind of monthly campaigns just to reach their email list and website visitors, and you know just stay top of mind and can, can continue engaging with those users on Instagram. So um, this is two ads from I believe November, and um, these are targeted at again their email list and website visitors. And that drove 103 sessions on their website, and that reached about 5,000 people. So 5,000 people viewed those ads, and it generated a lot of engagement, too. So they had about 408 likes, shares, and comments. And it's just nice, like, if you're planning. I know when I go to hotels and stuff, I always love looking at the slideshow they provide, you know, on, on the hotel website and stuff like that. But even going, I love going to people's Instagram accounts and seeing, like, this more personal um, image of people actually like really immersing themselves into the activities in the area and stuff. Um, it's just kind of another neat way to really display the great things that you guys all have at your locations. Yeah, definitely. You can see these things are, are activities that a guest might engage with on their, on their visit. And that kind of stuff is, is what users like to see because they can imagine themselves in a uh, what is that called? The parasail? <laughs> parasail. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, they can For sure. themselves doing that or, or their family whale watching. So that's the kind of content we want to see. For sure. Uh, the next example is from uh, Home Ranch. They are a guest ranch or a dude ranch, if you want to call it that, in, um, in Steamboat Springs, Colorado. And again, we do monthly campaigns for them targeted at their email list, website visitors. And we also focus a lot on brand awareness to try to grow their uh, to grow their audience. So each month we create a new a new Instagram ad based on whatever season we're promoting. So obviously right now it's winter 
And um, from those campaigns in 2016, we drove about 300 sessions and reached 58,000 people. Um, and those, are, again, are mostly new, new users who have never engaged with the home ranch before. And those posts generated 1,300 likes, comments, and shares. So that's a lot of engagement, and that's a great way to um, keep your audience interested in, in what you have to offer. So I want to talk about best practices, um, you know, how you can be successful on Instagram uh, going forwards. This is a diagram you might have seen before if you've attended one of our webinars. I just think it's a it's an easy, simple way to explain the difference between different social platforms. Uh, so, for example, you wouldn't share, uh, you know, every every one of your 140 character thoughts on Facebook, and you wouldn't necessarily post your selfies on LinkedIn. So, they all have different purposes, and it's important to recognize those and use them appropriately. So, in this case, Instagram is a photography platform, and it's about sharing visually interesting content. So. You want to keep that in mind when you're sharing anything on Instagram. So Instagram is, is a little bit unique. It's a great platform for brand awareness in that you can, you can build relationships with your current leads and your, your, your new leads or people who might not be leads yet who you are just interacting with for the first time. So you know by sharing that really interesting content about the guest experience or your properties, you, you're building a relationship and making people aware of, of what your destination has to offer and what your, what your company has to offer. Um, on top of that, Instagram also has an ad platform so that you can create ads on Instagram and drive traffic to your website. Uh, you can't include links in, in organic Instagram posts just because of the way the platform is set up, but you can include links in the Instagram ads. So it's important to realize um, the differences between how those two work. So what I usually tell clients is, is think of Instagram as a brand awareness tool and the added benefit is, is driving traffic, but that's not the main goal. So you should focus on brand awareness. So uh, some of you might not have an Instagram account set up already. So obviously that would be the first step. Um, and that's pretty simple. You, you would just go to your, uh, you download the Instagram app and create an Instagram account that way. And if you need any help with that, just let me know. Um, so once you have that set up, there are a couple ways to make the most out of your profile. The first is if you have a personal account and you're going to be switching back and forth between multiple accounts, like say I do, I, I switch between you know five or 10 accounts uh, every week. So the easiest way to do that is to add accounts to your profile. So I'll show you an example or instructions. So when you're adding an account, you'll want to go to your settings tab and click add account and then set up the credentials for your, for your new business account or, or the business account you currently have. And then by doing that, you'll be able to uh, kind of toggle between each account easily at the, when you're logged into your profile and you click the arrow above your, um, above your screen, like this here, uh, you'll see a drop down menu that shows you all of your different profiles and you can just quickly change between those, which is a lot easier than logging out and logging back in. It saves a lot of time. And the second thing is to make sure that your business profile is set up as a business profile. This is a new uh, feature that Instagram released a few months ago. Um, you can You can make your Instagram profile specific for businesses and that allows you to access um, insights, which is just basically analytics for Instagram. They're pretty basic, but it's information you, you want to have. And in addition to that, it, oh, sorry. In addition to that, it allows you to feature a contact button on your Instagram profile page. And it includes a link, um, your address, your website, and, um, it shows what your industry is. So again, to do that, you would go to the settings button and then switch to business profile using that option. And there are a few more steps after that. So if you have trouble, you can just let me know. So uh, once you have your profile set up correctly and have that good to go, you'll want to focus on what kind of content you're sharing. So you'll see a lot of brands do this differently. I recommend to clients that we share about 80% guest experience content and 20% properties. 
Um, I, you know, I personally don't like to follow accounts that just show, um, just show their product the whole time because that gets boring. You understand what their product is. You, you've seen it once. You don't want to see it every single time they're sharing a post. So I think that's the best way to, to share your content. It's share things that remind guests why your destination is so fun or how, how their family could have a great time at your destination. So, um, this example here on the side is from Beaver Run Resort, which is in Breckenridge, Colorado, and they feature a lot of, um, you know, a lot of content about skiing or, or having drinks with friends and then interspersed throughout that content, you'll see, you'll see photos of their property like these two here. And also another thing on having the ability to switch users or switch to different um, profiles on Instagram, like if you have employees that, you know, are always on the scene and always doing fun stuff in the area, like I know here people love to go snowboard or ski and um, utilize all the fun trails here. Like you can let people have access to your account if you feel comfortable with that and they can then go and add photos kind of for your whole business which is great. So you can have different employees kind of helping out. So it's not just one person that has to, you know, add a photo a few a week or whatever. It could be different people, you know, can talk about it and figure out when they should add and stuff like that. So yeah. it's a good way to more be the whole team. Yeah. 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 The more content you have access to, the better. So that's, that's a good idea. Um, so let's see. So, as I said, Instagram is, is a visual platform, so you want to make sure that the photos you're sharing are appealing and attractive to people. So um, there's been a lot of research about what kind of photos get the most engagement, and most sources will say that um, photos that are bright rather than dark <laughs> and photos that are have warm colors are, are the most engaging photos, and people tend to respond to those more, most positively. Um, one way to make sure that you're you're doing that is, is use the same filter on every image, um, and that also provides consistency. So you have you have a kind of look to your brand. Uh, you know, this is the same way you want your website to have consistency. You want your your social media profiles to have consistency too. So, um, so if you are a beach destination, you you might want to use a filter that brightens your photos, makes them a little more colorful, because that's kind of the the look and feel of, of tropical destinations. So, um, yeah, that's one thing to think about. Make sure that your photos are pretty high quality. Of course, you can use your, your camera phone. That's what most, most photos on Instagram are. Um, but make sure they're all, you know, they aren't grainy, they aren't too small, uh, they have good resolution um, within reason. So it doesn't have to be professional quality, but keep that in mind. And then research has shown that if you increase the saturation on your photos, it actually... Uh, decreases the amount of engagement so just make sure to make your photos look realistic and then adding all those um, adding saturation and like too many filters can also make it look grainier if you're on like Facebook and it's not comes up on Facebook or something when you're on your computer right and it's a bigger photo so just always double check that too right in Pull general, it up on your computer and see the more like filtering you do the grainier it looks so keep it keep it simple so Another way to make the most out of your posts is to um, include more information, more data in those posts. So there are a couple ways to do that. One way is to tag any relevant people or businesses. Um, so you can see this example on the side for Beaver Run Resort. We tagged uh, the Breckenridge Tourism Office and the Visit Breckenridge website, uh, as well as the, the, the resort itself. Breckenridge Ski Resort and Beaver Run Resort. So that's four different tags. And um, and by doing that, ah, that's hard to explain. So when you're on a profile, you can see which photos someone is tagged in. So by tagging these kind of high high value brands like Go Breck or Breckenridge Resort, if someone clicks to see what photos that brand was tagged in, they would see your photo. So it's a great way to get your photos in front of more eyes. Yeah, like through another company on Instagram that's has heavy traffic. Right. And then if you, you know, share and include them, maybe they'll tag you in a post or maybe um, they'll, you know, like sometimes I know the place here, Aspen Snowmass, like if you tag them in your post, sometimes they'll feature your post on their feed. So it's kind of a cool thing that could possibly happen too. 
Right. Yeah. That's a good thing. Like go Brack could be like, Oh, look at Beaver run resort. You know, one of their guests is, you know, they might bring you up in a post too, that would cause more likes and more followers. Right. So the other thing to include is a location, uh, which you can set whenever you're posting your photo. And obviously this was tagged at Breckenridge Ski Resort. And again, that's another way for people to access your photos when they're searching for locations. So make sure you include, include that. Um, and then in your comments, your, your description right here, you want to tag anybody who is relevant. So again, we tagged Breckenridge Mountain and, um, and then we included hashtags. And that was the last point I wanted to make on that. Um, make sure people have mixed feelings about hashtags. Sometimes it looks a little too, um, I don't know the word salesy maybe. Um, but if you want to make sure to get your posts in front of, in front of as many eyes as possible, you should be using hashtags. Hashtags are a great way to reach new users and drive brand awareness. So make sure you're including um, as many that are relevant as possible. So to talk about hashtags a little bit more, a few, a few different themes you can focus on are your location. Uh, so, you know, Breckenridge is in the Rocky Mountains and Colorado, so we use those hashtags. And then you can focus on time of year if that's relevant. So, um, you know, it's just starting to snow here, so we used hashtag winter, hashtag let it snow. You can do hashtag pow, <laughs> hashtag, you know, all the, you know, popular, trendy um, hashtags that people are searching for. Then if there's a holiday, you can use that. So for example, New Year's Eve, you can use local hashtags that might be um, specific to your area, like in Breckenridge, the hashtag go Breck or hashtag Breck because are really popular. I think those were started by the tourism office. So a lot of people who visit Breckenridge use those when they're sharing photos. And then you always wanna use kind of generic terms as well, like tr travel or vacation or vacation rental. So um, yeah, there are a lot of different ways to do it and it really depends on your location. And you can, can you search those hashtags too to see how many have been posted of that to like figure out, you know, are people even searching that? Yeah, that's like, a good point. When yeah. you, when you click to add the hashtag, it usually shows you how many people okay. have used that. Cool. Um, so if you, if you looked up Colorado, it would probably say, you know, 5 million people next to the, next to the lane. So that's a good way to gauge whether it's actually a valuable term or not. Mm -hmm. Nice. Um, another thing is whenever you want to reach new, new users and build relationships with, with your followers, you, you should be strategically engaging, which is just a fancy way of saying, uh, you know, talk to them or respond to their content. So you can do that by interacting with people who comment on your photos. So if someone makes a comment on something you posted, you can respond and say something in response to that, or you can search for for new users using those hashtags, locations, or tags, and interact with those people. So for example, uh, this user on the, on the right over here interacted with one of our Beaver Run posts. So we went to her page, saw her content, and responded with a comment um, to her photo. And um, from that, she was, she was interested in, um, in kind of interacting with us, so she sent us a private message about uh, sharing her photos on our account. So it starts a relationship, it starts a dialogue, and it's a great way to build to build kind of a rapport with your followers or new users. And we have actually a question just really quick. Um, yeah. Someone asked if you think it's a good idea to kind of start your own hashtag, like if it would be your location name or like a, you know, try to start like a fun new like Breck Because, but you would try to, yeah. you know what I mean, use your own to try to get people that are staying there to use them? Like, that's a good idea? question. I should have included that. Yeah, I actually tell a lot of clients to do that. I should have included that on this slide. But um, that's a great way to to get people to interact with your brand, especially your guests. So if you could promote a custom hashtag, um, you know, in your pre-rival emails or in, um, you know, in print materials when they arrive, any, if any way you can promote that, when your guests arrive, that would encourage them to share their photos using that hashtag. So, um, like, let's see, uh, GoBreck is a great example, or in Telluride, they have one, I can't remember what it was called. Um, or even be cool, like on the little key you give people to check in, like on there, say, we love seeing our guests experience, hashtag 
go Brex so we can, you know, yeah. watch how you're enjoying it or something. Just yeah. having that out there is a great thing to do. That's also a good way to get uh, free content to, to post. So yeah. um, it's always hard to come up with photography resources. So if you have your guests posting their own content, uh, you can use that on your on your social media channels. And of course, always give them credit and say, you know, thanks. Becky for sharing this great photo from your family vacation, but uh, it's a, it's a great way to get additional photography. So actually that's, that's a really great idea. Uh, so back to strategic engagement. Um, so you can always comment on their photos, like their photos, um, any, anything like that, any way to engage with them and get, get them to notice you and, a great way to do that is to make sure you're searching for relevant locations or hashtags to access those people who are within your audience. You don't want to target just anybody. They should be people who are already interested in the, um, you know, the things you offer or are in a location that's relevant or targeted for your, for your brand. So just be a little strategic about how you're, how you're engaging with people. So uh, the other thing is you want to make sure you're posting at the right time. Uh, there are different times of day that see the most engagement. You know, if you post at two in the morning, no one is awake, so they're not going to like your photo. <laughs> and Instagram's algorithm works sort of the same way as Facebook's now in that um, the most engaging photos are pushed to the top of your feed. So it's important that you're receiving engagement in order to reach those people. It's no longer in chronological order. So uh, posting at the right time is really important. And in general, midweek is the best time to post. So Wednesday, Thursday, and Tuesday see the highest engagement. Then the time you're posting matters. And I have no idea why these times are <laughs> important. I, I tried to decide why 3 a.m. on a Tuesday is a good time to post. Um, but this is the recommendations from, um, from most of the resources I found. Um, in general, you'll want to post either at night when people are coming home from work and settling in to relax. Um, midday seems to be a good time on the weekends. So you can also test and see what time you see the most engagement with your posts. So if you're, if you're posting, um, if you're posting kind of the same content and you see higher higher amounts of engagement on, on Saturday, then maybe you want to post on Saturday going forwards. So just pay attention to that and, and see what works best for you. And seeing these times, are, uh, we have another question too, just by looking at these times, I kind of thought the same thing. Um, can you schedule these so you don't have to be up at 1 a.m. on Friday if you don't <laughs> want to be? Are you uh, able to schedule these? You know... You can't. I, I did some research to see if there are any new platforms that allow you to. You can't do it. You can't schedule posts within Instagram. You can't schedule posts within most of the social media management tools. Like we use Buffer and they don't have that option. So I don't think that's an option uh, right now. Hopefully that will be in the future because it's certainly <laughs> annoying for me too to have to <laughs> yeah. log in every time I want to post. But <laughs> um, yeah, as soon as that's available, I'll make sure to tell the whole world because I'll be excited. <laughs> um, so I wanted to talk about Instagram targeting for ads briefly. Instagram is owned by Facebook, so they have the same targeting capabilities. So if you use Facebook ads and you're aware of all the different options for, for targeting within Facebook, that is the same platform that you would use for Instagram ads. And Facebook is really powerful. They, they collect so much information about their users. It's really creepy. They, they know way too much. They, they can figure out if you have kids, how old your kids are, what your household income is, what your net worth is. They have all that data about you. And you can use that to your advantage as a business owner by targeting those users. So um, these are a few of the demographics that you can use. Um, there's a long list I could go into. It's really, it's, it's really a lot. Um, we, we always just customize it to whatever our, our clients' demographics are. So you can target by demographics like household income, parent, parent, parenthood, um, different life events. So you can target people who are newly engaged in the past six months. Um, you can target people who are frequent travelers. 
um, by behavior. So there's a lot of behavioral data they have, whether you use coupons or not, if you're a frequent international traveler, um, whether you tend to buy environmentally friendly products, they have all this information that you can use. And then in addition to that, they have interest targeting. So if you're interested in um, the Outer Banks or if you're interested in skiing or scuba diving, they, they know that about you too. So you can use all of that to target your ads. And just real quick, we're actually at uh, 2.30, so we hit our half hour mark. So if any of you need to jump off, that's totally fine. We'll, we're actually going to send up a follow-up email um, that'll include a recording of the rest of this, the whole thing, actually. Um, so you'll be able to watch that, too, if you guys need to hop off or anything. Just real quick. Thanks. Yeah, we only have a couple minutes left, so I will be wrapping this up. <laughs> Um, another way to target Instagram ads is using your current leads. So you can target your email list and your website visitors. Um, for the email list, you can target just your entire list, and um, that's a pretty broad, broad way to target. Or you can target specific segmented lists if you have segmented email lists. Um, you know, if you are using our email program, we can see exactly who clicks on a link within your email marketing. And we can export that list and use that to target users with Instagram ads. And that's really the most effective way to do it. We see really great results using that really targeted email list. Um, so that's one thing to keep in mind. And then we can also target website visitors using um, a Facebook pixel. So again, Instagram ads are managed within Facebook. So you would use the same Facebook pixel that you use for Facebook ads. And using that, you can target just anybody who visits your website, or you can target people who visit within a, a certain time frame, like the previous five days um, or 90 days. And then you can target visitors to specific web pages. So, for example, if you wanted to target people who visit um, your long term stays page, you know, if you have long term stays, you could target those people. Or if you wanted to target people who visited, um, who visited your vacation rentals page but did not visit the checkout page, you could do that as well. So there are a lot of options for, for website retargeting. And then the last thing is you can target your Facebook fans, which is a good way to try to grow your following on Instagram. If they already followed you on Facebook, they're likely to follow you on Instagram. So you can target those users. And another fun thing is you can target users who liked your competitor's Facebook page. And, um, that's not an option for all competitors because they have to have a certain number of likes. Facebook won't tell me what that number is, but I think it's about, they have to have about 50,000 likes um, to be available for that kind of targeting. Um, but that's a great way to, to try to grow your audience to people who are already using vacation rental websites, um, using competitor retargeting. So if you are managing Instagram, you're pretty new to it and you want more information, there are a few helpful resources you can use. Uh, Instagram has a business website for, for business owners who are using Instagram for marketing. It's uh, business.instagram.com. Uh, in addition, they have an Instagram blog you can use where they, uh, they, they post about a lot of their newest features. So you want to make sure you're staying up to date on all these updates. Um, so you can check out their blog for that. And then a couple industry resources I like to use are um, Social Media Examiner which is a, a blog about the social media industry, and then Social Times, which is part of Adweek. Um, those are great resources. And then that is all the information I wanted to share with you about best practices. Um, and I, I wanted to touch on what we do here to help our clients make the most out of social media. Um, you know, a lot of you are already strapped for time and it's a lot to ask to remember to post on Instagram or remember to, um, you know, create that Facebook ad and you might not have all the tools uh, available to you to do that. So um, we love working with clients to create really creative strategies to um, access, the, access their users on social media. So we offer a few different packages to do that. Um, we can do everything from setting up every single account if you haven't set anything up yet to managing those accounts monthly. Uh, there are a lot of different options. So um, for social media management, we have three different packages um, based on how many hours you, you want to use. And these are great if you have a resource on your team or not. For some of our clients, they have 
they have someone in the office that usually manages this stuff, but they don't have enough time to do all of it. So in, in that capacity, we usually kind of collaborate with that person. So we're a team and we work together to, to accomplish all the goals that we have for social media. And then if you don't have anybody on your team that, that is responsible for that, we can be that person and, uh, again, be a part of your team and work with you to create the strategy that you you, you want and, the, and advise you on what you should be doing on social media. So um, whatever your capacity is to manage social media currently, we, we can work within that to help you achieve your, your social media goals. So if you have any questions about pricing or want to know more, you can reach out to me and I can send you more detailed information. This, again, is, is pretty brief, so there's, there's more in-depth information we can provide. So yeah, that was that was it. I hope that wasn't over too much. About six minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was that was question. Uh, no, there's no. I don't see any other follow up questions. This was great. Um, yeah, just one final reminder. You just look out for the email we'll send out, um, and we'll again we'll include Reagan's information. So feel free to respond to that email or just grab her uh, information from there and respond di directly to her. Uh, if you have any other questions or concerns. Uh, and also on that email, there'll be a place that you can take a survey and give us some feedback. So we always love hearing about what you guys want to hear next and any topics, you know, we would love to touch on would be great. Um, but look out for another invite for our next webinar, December 8th. And I guess that's kind of it for today. So thanks for joining us again and have a great rest of your afternoon. Thanks, guys.